Hey there. My name is Dor- <laughs> uh. All right, try that again. Uh. Wow, I'm like a really ugly woman. <laughs> anyway, my name is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to do this. Recreate the newspaper scene in the amazing movie Cruella. All right, let's get started. This, this isn't even on. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. Just a warning, there might be spoilers ahead. You are warned. If you have not seen the movie Cruella, there are some pretty incredible 3D tracked images throughout the movie depicting what looks to be uh, some newspaper articles and stuff like that. So we are going to be using, of course, M-Tracker 3D to replicate those. To locate M-Tracker 3D, go in your effects, drag M-Tracker 3D onto your clip. You've got two buttons. One says track on the canvas. The other says track in the inspector. Press track. Each button does the same thing. Once you're done tracking, we will want to press copy track in our inspector, and now we have that tracked data available for opening our titles. So we're gonna go into M-Tracker 3D expansions, and we're gonna be using the brand new info pack. We are gonna be using title number 30 because it is the closest to being pre-built as to what we could see in the film Cruella. Let's go ahead and turn snapping on, and now we can make sure that our title is snapped and you can see no tracking data available so we have already copied that from the inspector we're just going to click paste and you can see we now have our tracked data so you can see that we're already tracked we're good to go but what i'm going to be doing is utilizing the space in between my two computers so i'm going to click my button here and find the location i'd like while holding shift and that is gonna orient everything. I'm going to scale this up nice and large and place it where it appears as though it is centered in between my two computers. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Cruella, you'll know that a lot of that tracked text has the appearance of being behind different elements in the actual scene. So we are gonna be doing quite a bit of masking. Now, before we get into that, I'm going to really quickly speed this up as I work so that I can go ahead and put the text in and then we will get around to formatting and adding our masks. Okay, so you can see now that I have formatted my text in the Garmond Rough font, and that has a bit of a newspaper look to it. I have also positioned my main text to be a bit larger and over top of my two subtexts because that is similar to the Cruella newspaper headlines that we see in the film. So as you can see, as we push forward and go back, the track is perfect, but a lot of that text is floating in front of different elements within our scene, and we need to get rid of that. We need to make it look as though the text is behind and in between our two computers. In order to do that, we are gonna be utilizing masks. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to highlight our primary clip by clicking. We're gonna hold option, click and drag up, and we're going to place this clip on top of our title layer. We're going to go ahead and go find our masks and our effects, and we're going to pick up draw mask on top of this clip. So what we are doing are picking points and we are going to add points around our computer and different elements that are in front of our text here. So over in our inspector, if you drop down, you can see our transform tools and control points. Now that's a lot of control points. So the easiest thing to do is just click keyframe here and you can see that that is going to keyframe all of our points. Go ahead and click rotation, position and scale and all that stuff just so that if we end up keyframing any of that, we're good to go. So as we push down in our timeline, we can see we're going to need to grab all of those control points and just begin positioning them in place 
fine tuning and tweaking that position. And remember, these are keyframing. So as we move forward, our keyframes are holding in place and we are placing that text virtually in between our two computers. This is known as rotoscoping. We are going to increase our view on the canvas so that we can get a better look and be quite zoomed in so that we can make sure that our rotoscoping is perfect on our draw mask. So the next thing I want to do is make a blade cut on my top layer. I'm going to push down until the point that I know that we're going to need a second draw mask for the back side. And we're just going to trim that clip so that we can start a new draw mask and new rotoscope on the back side of our text. We will continue fine tuning and tweaking these positions because we really want to sell the idea that this text is floating in between our two computers. And now we will do that exact same process with our draw masks and keyframes on the back side of our text. I like the way this looks, however, I think that I can get a bit more texture by utilizing 3D text. So I'm going to highlight my text in the canvas, open up my inspector, and we're going to turn on the 3D text for each of these text elements in MTracker 3D. Once we've done that, we're going to zero out our depth parameter so that we have a flat image. And we are going to change our material to drawing paper just to give a little bit more grain and roughness to our text. I'm going to resize my text a bit just so we make sure we can see everything in there. And then I'm going to utilize the rectangle option that is pre-built in this title from MTracker Expansions Info. So if we scroll down, you can see we have a rectangle option that we are going to enable. Click to enable our rectangle and you'll see it comes in and there it is right in between MVFX and News. We're going to scale this up and we're going to reposition our rectangle. If you can see our drop down arrow here on size, we can make further adjustments only to our width so that we can cover MVFX news. Now this is very similar to a lot of the headline titles in the film Cruella. We will continue to adjust those parameters. I love how MTracker 3D works with the camera lens as well. You can see that that distortion is being taken into account in our text. We're going to lower the opacity and we're going to change the color a bit to better reflect the Cruella film. But you can see now that our rectangle is actually in front of and affecting the color of our MVFX news headline. Make some further adjustments to that opacity really quickly. And then we are going to scroll up in our inspector and we're going to look at our primary header title here. Let's open up the header position and you can see that we can adjust the Z position forward and then boom, now we see our text shining brightly in beautiful white in front of our rectangle. If I go back, you can see it turns red and then forward, we can now see that white. So we are working in Z space here, right in Final Cut Pro, pushing that forward in front of our rectangle. One of our final steps, we're going to use Fog out of MTracker 3D, and we're going to just place that again on the clip, and we will copy and paste our track, and we're just using this Fog to give the shot a little bit of atmosphere. 
that you can absolutely see in the film. We're just going to place that there in the center and increase the size, decrease the opacity a bit, and just, again, add some overall atmosphere into our shot. And finally, add a quick color grade to match the film, and you are good to go. Thank you again for watching this tutorial on how to mimic the Cruella newspaper scenes. I want to make a quick shout out to Zoe Simpson for bringing in some of her work to use as our background. You can find her website in the description below. Again, my name is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Thank you for checking out this tutorial. Be sure to subscribe and we will see you on the next one.